again. The wave was going around that stadium. And around. Were you participating like, in it? Like, uh, okay. They had to. At the end, reason. it was just lethargic. I'm like, okay, people, are we done yet? Uh. She comes home and she's like, when when does this thing end? I'm like, when you decide. You're doing it. What are you talking about? She's still doing it now. Okay. Well, I guess we got to do this. Hello and welcome to The Great Beyond and Is This Good Companion pod where I catch up with my friend and yours, Jason Doyle. Hello. Hi, JD. Thanks for coming and producing the show. She'll patch your call through when she goddamn feels like it. <laughs> Rachel Doyle. Yeah, that's how I roll, people. That's right. You're the switchboard <laughs> operator. That's right. <laughs> hey, um, is the is the energy I'm feeling in the room uh, excitement at the big Atlanta news that dropped? Oh, uh, I don't know. Um, what Atlanta news are you referring to? <laughs> <laughs> I'm referring to the news that Tim Hortons <gasps> is opening some locations in Atlanta. Oh, oh that's, that's old news, very old folks. News. Yeah. No, but it opened. It just opened. Oh. Is it the one near Georgia Tech? Because that was pretty yes. exciting. Well, okay. wait. It was already open? No, I, I, it was, you know, in the works. So it is news. Oh, it is news. Fine. I knew it was happening. <laughs> the construction was before my eyes. Hey, well, I'm, I'm on the Atlanta uh, Canadians facebook group and they just won't shut up about fucking <laughs> tim hortons like it's so embarrassing <laughs> it kind of is but i don't know uh, you know what i was just thinking about like literally two days ago those delicious breakfast wraps that we had when we were home oh my <laughs> god you're sounding like one of the atlanta <laughs> canadians now. yeah fuck go Hash join a facebook browns. group oh Eggs, hash brown, this delicious sauce, bacon. It was perfection. It's pretty good. I mean, sure. And for a reasonable price. They That's where you got me. Well, I was going to say that because in the uh, 11 Alive news story about <laughs> the first Tim Hortons <laughs> opening, uh, yeah. what a story. Oh, we may be expanding to Atlanta. Oh, we've just broken ground on our new Georgia Tech location. Wow, exciting. No, it's exciting when it's opening. That's why it's called. Right. A grand opening. Right, yes, yes. Anyways. Uh, we did not says, make our way down there or anything. So I can go get that sandwich right now is what you're saying. You can go, oh, I don't know. I don't know if it well. was a specialty item, a seasonal item. But my, yeah, my question was, so in the 11, and I, 11 Alive news article, it said, quote, the popular Canadian breakfast chain uh, is opening at the intersection of Spring and North Avenue across the varsity, whatever. Popular Canadian breakfast chain? Is that how you would describe Tim Hortons? Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I would call it a donut shop. I still think of it as a donut shop, although it's definitely a breakfast it's a coffee place. shop. It's got yeah. Uh, I I hesitate to call it a coffee shop, but I guess you're right. Yeah, it is. Its main competitor in in Toronto is is McDonald's for breakfast. But they also serve lunch. They serve I lots know. of sandwiches. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. not, I mean, it's not a breakfast place. Most I mean, you them. can get breakfast there, but would you call Starbucks a popular American breakfast chain? No. 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 I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No matter how many paleo <laughs> egg bites you eat, it's it's <laughs> just not. I, I went um, a little deep on, on Tim Hortons. Because okay. once I started thinking about it, I was like, I got, I got a lot. I got some questions. Do you know... The, he died under less than ideal circumstances. Talking about Tim, the original Tim yeah, Horton. Yeah, um, uh, a single car car accident. Um, yeah, but he was drunk. Yeah, and he was on drunk. Pills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pills yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And out. they sold. So when he died, they sold the Tim Hortons chain. I think it had like four hundred stores at the time that he died to his business partner for a million dollars. That's I nothing. Think they have like fourteen billion dollars <laughs> worth of assets now. Oh no, no, it's expanded. They have thousands of stores, so obviously right. this guy did the work. But that's still pretty crazy. And and I think the his Tim Horton's widow at some point was like, Oh, hold on a second, I made a real bad deal here. <laughs> and then uh tried to sue them and then I think she she lost the the lawsuit as well. So Wow. If you think Canadians are boring, I'd like to see John Duncan. <laughs> Die in a fiery wreck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> John Duncan. And still, or whatever. and still have the balls to call them Timbits, knowing how he died. Mm. 
like it, what what are you saying <laughs> that at the, I'm ra- saying after that, the it record sounds like she, everything of was Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Oh. You think the cops were called to the scene and were going? They said, "Is it bad, sir?" <laughs> and the lead detective's like, "God damn, just Timbits all over the highway." Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, you can buy a. You can. Oh no, wait. I always forget which it is. One. I, I, it's a Dunkin' Donuts. You can buy a single Timbit, and a Tim Hortons. You can't. No, I think it might be the reverse. Tim Hortons. You can buy a single. Timbit. Yeah, you definitely can. Dunkin' Donuts will not allow it, mm. which I think is. Dunkin' Donuts doesn't sell Timbits. Oh, well, whatever. Dunkin' Hole, uh, Holes. Holes. Munchkins, 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 Munchkins. Oh. munchkins. That's wow, you are really up to speed with your uh, coffee shops. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was also thinking there's a Toronto chain of coffee called Timothy's. Yes. Oh, yeah. No relation. I know, but it Weird. was always assumed that, I assumed that it was. I, I was like, okay. It was like this the is... upscale uh, <laughs> offshoot of Tim Hortons. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> because you hear people calling Tim Hortons, Tim's. Or Timmy's. You never hear anyone call it Timothy Hortons, but I assume his name was Timothy Horton. (laughs) We knew a guy who owned the Timothy's on the Danforth. He bought a franchise. And did do well? (laughs) The guy is fabulously wealthy now. But not just because of that. He was brilliant. He's a brilliant businessman. Yeah, it gave him his start, though. And he worked his ass off in that place. And now he owns, like, uh, Milestones, and I think he may still own that Timothy's. But he's a real estate mogul. He he's got like uh, he's got several cars and like he has a, a he he took a picture of his Land Rover and posted it the other day, and uh, it's got it the license plate was his last name and three so that's his third Land Rover maybe like oh jeez yeah he's uh, he's done incredibly well. We worked with him on East Side Mario. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, uh, come on, sponsor the show then, Timothy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have some of your fabulous coffee. Um, before we get into the the goods, not goods, did you see the eclipse? Mm-hmm. You were in a much better place to see it than I was. Yeah, yes, yes we were. But it wasn't total, but uh, it was it's cool. Pretty close. Uh, it was a sliver, I mean, sliver yeah, left. It was pretty close. It was still very bright out, but weirdly tinted. It you know? felt Everything... like it was wearing sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah. It was wearing sunglasses. No, we, we were. We oh, were oh. the way the light Wait, wait you were wearing glasses. <laughs> not, well, when I was staring at the sun, yes, but not right. when I was just standing outside. <laughs> yeah. Right. It, well, I, I saw NBC News said, Google searches about hurt eyes spiked Monday afternoon just after many U.S. communities experienced the total solar eclipse. Now, do you think this was legitimate or do you think, do you think this was people like me Googling uh, hurt eyes... <laughs> To make fun of the people that didn't listen to us about wearing the glasses. Right. Uh, great question. Um, I have to say that after looking at the eclipse, n- probably probably looked up at it twenty times or so. Mm-hmm. I I don't know if it was psychosomatic, but I felt like my eyes hurt. Mine did too, and we were wearing the <laughs> eclipse glasses we every were. time we looked up. <laughs> I was like, oh, my eyes are aching yeah. right now. I thought. Well, you're still staring into the sun. And I think, what do we say? That they're 100 times darker than sunglasses? Yeah. Those uh, 299 Amazon specials? That sounds about right. It's yeah. $20 so, for five over here. Okay. Great. 20 for five? Mm-hmm. Bargain. And to you, only four people in your family. So what did you do? Put them on a put them on the dock? <laughs> she, she drove them You will stare into house. the eclipse, Hazel. <laughs> <laughs> Look up! Look up! I was worried uh, yeah. about Hazel, actually, while we were out there. Like, as if she would look up at the eclipse, you know. It's because she's your baby. <laughs> well, I mean, she probably, no, she wouldn't care. No. I just decided she wouldn't care. <laughs> she would not notice at all. It does look like a ball, though. <laughs> yep, you're the right. The sun? Yeah, you're right. Also the moon. You might want to check that thing out when the sun goes down. A, they're a real, probably one of the best one-two combinations. Yeah, you're right. They're like the Stockton and Malone of celestial phenomenon. <laughs> Someone's going to uh, complain about too much sports talk now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was thinking, I was when we were ta- talking about Tim Hortons, I was trying to come up with like, because was Tim Horton good at hockey? Oh, um, he, z- literally no idea, but what? I think so. I mean, he played. Maybe it was just rec hockey. Yeah, I don't he, know. No, he no, was in no, the no, He played for the oh. Maple Leafs. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Rachel. I'm sorry. His I jersey... knew he played. I knew he played. Yeah. Well, of yeah. course he was good then if he was in the NHL. But he yeah, played but for the Leafs. The... Just kidding. Yeah, I think his jersey's retired. But also, 
Rachel, like, think of, to put it in a context you might understand. Oh, fucking you. How about that? The, I can tell this. Are you going to dumb it down for me? All right. Let, no, I'm ready. just going to, I'm going to bring it to your area of expertise, which is pickleball. Now, who's the best, just name one. Who's the best pickleball player in the world? Annalie Waters. Okay, Annalie She's Waters. not the best in so, the world. Fucking Jesus, I didn't ben want Ben Johns, this to Jesus Christ. Is okay, better? Ben Johns. Ben Johns, perfect. <laughs> Perfect. So if there was a chain of coffee places named after Ben Johns, you'd be like, oh, that makes sense. He's the best pickleball player. Mm -hmm. But if it's like one of the worst ones, like I don't know who it would be, you'd be surprised that that they had like a multinational corp, uh, chain of restaurants <laughs> named after them. Wait, yeah, Jason Doyle's? Wait, yeah. he was a pickleball player, right? <laughs> Wait, yeah. what? Was Why? he good? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Look, people are asking about you today. They want you back. Yeah, okay. You must have been all right. Yeah. Like, like if, if there was a, a chain, like an NBA player that opened up a chain of coffee shops that had 4,000 locations across the world and it was called Bismack Biombos, you know, you'd be like, that's interesting. Yeah. He's not very good. Right. But, but why do you have to be good to open a business? Yeah. Because if it was called Michael Jordan's, everyone would want to go. <laughs> you don't it was have called to Wayne Gretzky's. Actually, Wayne Gretzky no. did have a restaurant, and it, no one went. And your it point have to is shut not down. accepted. You can open what are you a business talking and about? still be in the NHL and still be. If you're in the NHL, you are at least mediocre. You don't have to be the best to open a guy. Mediocre business. relative to me, yes. But if you're still the worst of the best, yes, it means you're good. But I'm just saying it's surprising. I agree. You're going to go to Gretzky's, but even bef even if you're great, you're going to Gretzky's before you're going to Lemieux's, right? Yeah, and, and that's, I don't know, maybe, you know, he's top five. Yeah. Why, if you why go does to, that make you good at coffee? It doesn't, but okay, it's made it just. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What? If you were going to start a coffee shop and you were going to put serious money into it, would you want it to be named after the best person in a certain field or a mediocre person? Okay, am Just I if confused? Just if it was up to you. Am I confused? Didn't, isn't it yes, his? Yes, before it's you even say business. anything. Yes. Then he, he doesn't need. He's an egomaniac and he called it himself. Nobody's like, I'm, I'm going to name this what? after this. It's his business. <laughs> well, okay, fair enough. It is his business. But at the same time, it shows that he wasn't very good at hockey because most people don't even know he was a hockey player. If right. it was called Michael Jordan's, it would you would never be able to divorce the coffee shop Michael Jordan's from the player Michael Jordan's. Yeah, but how many basketball players do you know from the same era that Tim Horton was in the NHL? George Mikan. <laughs> that was I saw those wheels turning. That was a deep dig you just did there. <laughs> Come on. I was trying to remember those play those people that are on the NBA's like hundred top hundred players of all time list that are from the early days and there's mm -hmm. just you know, like Right. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> like Bob Balaban. I mean well, that's an actor. But it, he you know, it could be Bob Balaban. Well, what about it's like that kind of a name? Jerry West. He but Jerry was... West is really good. Right. Well, so is Tim Horton, I guess. By the way, Pistol Pete's a great name for a, a <sighs> restaurant chain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, rootin' tootin' good time at Pistol Pete's. <laughs> right? I could yeah. see that. All right, Where Tim did Horton, Pistol Pete play? We salute you. Where did he what? Where did he play? I don't know. Mm. Um, he played with guns. The Lakers? I don't know. Yeah. He was big in college. I know that. But okay. I don't know where he played in the NBA. A short-lived career. Uh, did anything good or not good happen to you? <clears throat> uh, well, Rachel went to the She Believes Cup. Over the weekend. It was fun. Was pickleball? No, it's the women's soccer. The U.S. women's team versus Japan's women's team. And then it was a double header. Double header. Canada's national team, the world champion, Canada, mm -hmm. versus Brazil. We were outnumbered. The Canadians in the audience. Uh, men to women or? <laughs> Brazilians to Canadians. We were. Uh, Brazilian. Really? Brazilians? There was. It was. The booze were phenomenal for Canada. <laughs> and us polite Canadians were like, well, I can't boo. That's not right. Why are there so many? There's more Canadians in Atlanta than Brazilians. I'm almost willing to guarantee it. Maybe they're so why just aren't they too opening polite. Up, <laughs> uh, maybe they just hate Canadians, the Americans. No, I, They've had it with us. It cleared out after the U.S. versus Japan game. Like half of the Mercedes-Benz 
stadium left. Oh, so it didn't refill after. Well, it was still a reasonable amount that it it was like half. It was half, but like it was packed. Like again, the wave was going around that stadium and around. Were you participating like, in it? Like, oh, okay. They had to. At the reason. end, it was just lethargic. I'm like, okay, people, are we done yet? Uh. She comes home and she's like, when when does this thing end? I'm like, when you decide. You're doing it. What are you talking about? She's still doing it now. Um, okay. Well, I guess we You don't have to do, do it, this. Rachel. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. Uh, but I said it, this was a good thing. Oh, so it was a lot of fun. But the uh, Canada game... Uh, it was 1-1, and, um, well, the, the the goal from the Canadian was a header in. It was a fabulous goal. And then at the very end, they had to take it to a shootout, which was exciting. Canada won 4-2 in the shootout, and the goalie was incredible. incredible. Good for us. And Good they for celebrated us. They celebrated by going to the Tim Hortons across from the varsity. <laughs> the tri- those, you should have. God damn it. <laughs> those boos didn't get them. Didn't get them. Didn't shake them. Nice, like water off a duck. So you're so they're ready for Paris, is what you're saying. They they were fabulous. I I I mean the goalie's fucking ready. She was MVP. Great. Are Uh, you? What I was gonna ask if you're a big Olympics head, Rachel. No. Okay. But I should be. I think I could really get into it. Every time I see Jackson's uh, soccer game, or we're watching Premier League with him. I'm like, I need to go hit something hard. <laughs> I need to go hit the ball hard with my bigger wall paddle. Yeah. She would I get very competitive she just and wants I want to play. Stuff. I want to participate. You filter the entire world through pickleball. It's disturbing. No. <laughs> you see someone playing soccer and that to you means well, you must No, it's hit the a competitiveness pickleball? that is coming yeah. through and I'm getting and I want to be Are a you, part are you of happy it. with your com- competition level? Do you think the people that play with you think like you're too too competitive or not competitive? Oh no, I don't act like an asshole competitively on the. They mostly are like, "Bitch, why you gotta hit so hard? Yeah. <laughs> why you gotta okay. hit so hard? It's not necessary." They're scared of you, God. So I'm they're trying like, to. You, you hit so hard. There should be a chain of coffee shops called Rachel Doyle's. Mm. But who told me last time they were like, "I haven't like I haven't played against a guy in a while that hits as hard as you." Settle okay. down. <laughs> But okay. and, and it's all relative. It's all relative, obviously. But my arm hurts. I need to take a, I take a chill. Pill. Okay, good. You come. You come. Come right down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, JD. I interrupted you. Sorry. Oh no, nothing. I had a dumb joke that I was gonna say. Okay. Well, you don't have to say it now. <laughs> and so, what about you? You the thing that happened to you was that Rachel went to a soccer game. <laughs> I mean, that's it. I mean, we just came off the the tail end of, uh, well, spring break just happened. So yeah. kids went back to school today. I mean, yeah, two days ago on Tuesday. Um, and Lincoln went to New York. So I wanted to share some of travel stuff. You know, if you're, since he went on a flight, we should probably talk about okay. it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is a new thing. For us, really, because we've never dealt with it, it at this scale, but there were there were forty was it forty, Rachel? Uh yes. Mm-hmm. Forty high school kids taking a flight together oh, with boy. I think five chaperones. Mm-hmm. Um they're going to New York for four days and the instructions and some of them have never been on a plane before. Right. So, um, you know, imagine the <laughs> the daunting task. Anyway, um, the instructions were no checked bags, period. Oh, okay. I guess you wrote the instructions. <laughs> oh, no, no. You, no, you, no, no. I would no, say no, no, everybody no. You, check a you're bag. You're the opposite. But let, out of 40 kids. Yeah. Like, they're like, okay, well, we don't want to deal with, like, the, the baggage carousel or whatever. Yeah. Right. They're in main three, so like the bottom of the bottom when it comes to boarding on a yeah. Delta flight to New York. Some of those kids are going to have to check their bags, period. Of course. Of course. Also, some of them have never been on a plane before. So he sent the dimensions of what a carry on should be. Mm-hmm. But you know that somebody, anyway, somebody, one person had to check their bag. So that's mm-hmm. it for everybody. Everybody right. now has to go to the baggage carousel. 
Yeah, it's it's a lot to ask, to be honest. But how many days are they going to be there? Four days. But listen, uh, okay. okay, here's here's the the packing list that they that they were told. <laughs> so this is for a carry on. Four pairs of pants. Four Why pairs. Why are they dictating how many <laughs> pants to bring? Because I'm telling. First of all, you save on the pants. You I need know. one pair of jeans. I know, but that there. This was the official. Like this is what you should pack for this trip. Four pairs of pants. Four pairs of shirt, sweater, etc. Uh, they're oh, they're they were performing, up. so they had uh like a this black suit that they have to wear. So we're talking about a blazer, a pair of pants, and for the girls, like Ooh. a gown, like a oh uh, like a big Jesus. gown, right? Uh, a pair of comfortable walking shoes, a rain jacket, or a winter coat, or both, <laughs> or both. <laughs> okay. Two okay. to three sets of pajamas. I mean, come on. What? Four to five pairs. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Four to five pairs of undergarments. Now that one I can get behind. Five pairs yeah. of socks. Sure. Yeah. Toiletries. Okay. Yeah. Ah, that's a lot. It's a lot to ask to fit all of that shit into a bag. Now, of course. We know we've been on a four day trip. We understand, like you don't, you only need one pair of pants, really. Blah blah blah. But just, I just found it so inane that they would be expected to 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 fit all this into a bag and then be expected to not check a bag at all. Especially knowing that I, on the way back they definitely had to check bags, and I think uh, a couple of them had to check bags anyways because they're like the flight's full. Sorry, you got to check your bag. You know. Yeah, I mean, like, it, it's very clown car. Like, <laughs> totally. The, the, a bag is a bag. You can't fit that many things in it. Right. And by the way, what, what are they performing? Is it music? Yeah, they're a choir. So, oh, choir. I was going to say, well, where do they put their trumpets and shit? Right. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, like, you can't, you want them to pack, like, a blazer and nice pants and maybe nice shoes for this performance, but they're going to, like, shove them into this tiny carry-on. They're going to look like shit anyway. Totally. Exactly. Exactly. I hope those chaperones each brought a steamer. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and they're, you know, they're four to a room and whatever. I mean, it's a school trip, and so I, they had a blast and stuff, but and it was fine, but I was just like, God damn. They're just flirting with disaster, and it's it doesn't matter anyway because one kid showed up, big suitcase. <laughs> Sorry, got to check it. Didn't oh, Lincoln well. have a picture of that? We yeah, should've... he did. He should have. We're not was... putting up pictures of kids. No, no. I mean, the size of the bag. Yeah, yeah. The bag was massive. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and you know, it's like, they're like, well, it's not a carry on. It's like, oh, well, what do, what do I going to do? He was the one yeah. responsible for bringing all the booze. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, gigantic Fucking Hopefully. Bag. Hopefully it was filled with natty lights or whatever the kids are drinking these days. But also, if if you're a chaperone, the last thing you want is let's say everyone checks or most people check, mm -hmm. and then one person, two people lose their bags, and now you're on the phone the entire trip trying to find them. Sure. You got to take the kid to CVS. You got to take the kid shopping for a, like at least a pair of pants and a t-shirt, something like that. Right. So I do understand why they don't want that, but I I get it too, and they just want to. I I well, also you have to pay extra for the for the bag. At that oh, level, right, at right, the right. the bulk true. the bulk buying of uh, of plane tickets, so whatever. But I think if more, somebody wanted to pay the thirty five dollars, just pay it and whatever. Anyways, uh, but more importantly, how much would you have to be paid to be a chaperone on one of these trips? Oh God, ten thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> ten thousand dollars, a first class ticket, and a suite. Like when I got there, uh, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure, isn't it? Oh yeah, well yeah. I mean, I would. I don't want to disparage the <laughs> the uh, the chaperones because, but I, fa I from what I hear, they were basically useless, and they were they were parents of kids who were on the trip, which I think kind of ruins it for the kid. A, eh? they're like, I would never go be a chaperone on a trip that my kid right. was on, just because it's just like, Dad, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like. It's like the old Corolla bit where it's just like whoever volunteers to be a chaperone, you are automatically disqualified and then you get the person who least wants to do it because they'd be actually good at it. <laughs> I mean, one, one well, thing. Well, OK, let, let me let me tell you this. The, yeah, this this made me very annoyed. So they got a little per diem in Times Square. Oh, God. Uh, the kids. Yeah. It, yeah. it was like uh, this is the time to 
hang out and shop or whatever, you know, just do Times Square and you're on your own for dinner, right? But you mm-hmm. had to stay with your chaperone group. Mm-hmm. So they were all given envelopes with $25 cash in it as a per diem. Like, not okay. bad, right? Not bad okay. at all. So you they take went- that to, to stand in line at the TKTS, <laughs> you in a few hours you could be seeing a musical. <laughs> you're exactly right. Exactly right. So they they went to a pokey place, a poke or a sushi yeah. place, poke, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they were sitting there, and it was one of those places that has a counter. So you go up, you order, and then they deliver the food. Anyway, homeless dude walks in. It's New York, no big whip. Comes to the table. There's the chaperone is at the table, and there's five kids sitting at the table. Yeah. yeah. All of them but one gave this homeless guy the envelope with $25 in it. And the chaperone did nothing. And the chaperone said nothing and didn't, like, if it was me, I'd be like, okay, I, you know, here's five bucks. Get the fuck out of here. These are kids, whatever. Yeah. And the, the kids just literally <laughs> took that out. That is insane. So he made like and so Then the bill comes for the poke and they're like, sorry, we gave it to that guy. Well, they had already paid for the poke. Like, they all still had their <laughs> cash, but they paid with a card, right? Because nobody takes cash anymore. So. Which uh, child right, 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 did right, right, not right. give well, the, the $25? Guy took cash. Yeah, t- yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's so funny that, like, we're proud of our son <laughs> for not helping out. But I, I know what you mean. Like, it, it is a little absurd. It's called Street Smarts. That's all. Give someone $100. Yeah, yeah. But they were just like, eh, here you go. They felt really bad. And, you know, shout out to the kids. You know, but I don't know. The chaperone's got to do something in that yeah. case. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, what? why are you there if not for those <laughs> situations? You know what I mean? Kitty yeah, cat. well, exactly. Sorry, that's a, that's not a baby. That is a cat. <laughs> <laughs> that's your cat baby. Is deaf. <laughs> Could you Can you hear that meowing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah So because it's not a meow. It's, it's a... That's how she does. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. Uh, but yeah, that that is God. And then the one other thing, um, Lincoln's uh, the chaperone group that he was in. Uh, the 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 daughter of the chaperone was in the group, mm-hmm. and so they get they get they get to New York. They go to all the way to the dock for Ellis Island, like r- immediately, right from the airport. They're going to Statue of Liberty, right? So they get okay. all the way there. And if you know New York, it's at Battery Park, which is at the, the very bottom of Manhattan. Like, you can't go any more south. In, we, we had to stay there once. We it's did. very inconvenient. It was quite inconvenient. <laughs> so they took this bus all the way down. They got there. The du- when, when they got there, for some reason, there was like a four-hour wait to get on the ferry. Like, yeah. there were so many people for some reason. So they said, all right, screw it. We're going to Times Square, which pissed me off because they were going to <laughs> Times Square the next day and the day Instead after Instead of seeing that. a part of our history where immigrants came <laughs> oh to God. this land and we welcome them with open arms, uh, let's just go to the place that used to be filled with sex. That's right. Uh, <laughs> sex stores and strip clubs and yeah. and is now a pay into capitalism and an M&M store. That's exactly right. Anyway, uh so they were supposed to have lunch on a, uh, somewhere on Ellis Island. Anyways, it was... It uh, was by one- the way, I don't think the Statue of Liberty is on Ellis Island. No, I know. They were going to Ellis okay. and Liberty, but anyway. A twofer. A twofer, yeah. Which they ended up doing later on in the weekend. So that's all fine. But So they go to Times Square, and then Lincoln is like, everybody's starving. It's lunchtime. He's like, guys, we're in New York. Let's get a slice of pizza, right? Because it's fucking New York City, right? Yeah, Domino's, baby! <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. There's, so there's decent pizza around Times Square. Anyways. Uh, of course, there's Ray's. There's original Ray's. There's mm-hmm. famous original Ray's. <laughs> <laughs> you can get a little bit of a New York experience, sure. you know. Yeah, so, yeah, but they but they all outvoted him. They went to Raising Cane's, which is here in Atlanta. Like is they it? Can, yes. I don't know. I think it is. It is. Oh, okay. I think it is. But wait, yeah. so the, oh, so they went to both a poke place and her, no, no, uh, this was a different and, day. They went to, they went Times, to Times Square, Square twice, uh, three times because they, the day they got there, and then the next two days they were in Times Square because they were seeing two Broadway shows oh, on okay. consecutive Fine. nights. So of course you're going to be in Times Square. Which God, that that's see that's the the most frustrating part to me. Yeah, you go down to the Battery to go to you know Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty, 
And then you jump up to Times Square and you're like, nothing in between? <laughs> I mean, even the 9-11 memorial is right there in Battery yeah, Park. Yeah, they, they ended up going there as well which, the, later on, which he which was a highlight for sure. But anyway. Okay. And he was in the elevator when the earthquake happened. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, that's a little, that's a little scary. Yeah. Well, they didn't Knocked realize there because uh, it was just like, I guess the elevator shaking. Anyway. Right. So. Okay. If you're going to be a chaperone, you should number one qualification is not wanting to do it and then <laughs> if you're there doing it actually do something to guide the kids through the experience well he also said the chaperone put their daughter in charge so that well yeah they decided where they went so they he was like you know he was sitting in the disney store for 45 minutes while his group was looking for uh oh, for God. for little trinkets and stuff and i he was texting with me and i was like leave Go. I got your back. <laughs> go down. You're you're close to Rockefeller Center. Why don't you just go and look at the building where you know SNL is is taped or whatever? You're a shit just disturber. go look at it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's better than sitting in a Disney store. Jesus. Yeah, and then they're like, missing child. Red alert. My daddy told me to. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other chick's like, my mommy said I'm in charge. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ralph Wiggum over there. Uh... You anyway. get to be princess for the day, honey. <laughs> <laughs> they did go to the American Girl store. Yeah, did they? Oh really? my god, what a fucking nightmare! And it is M&M so funny store. though. But when they're that age, like you do get taken to stores. I, I do find it really weird. Fine. You know, it would be a better use of time, unless I mean, it, you know, whatever. It's April in New York. It's probably not hot, but I'm sure it's warm enough. Walk around. Yeah, exactly. And they're kids. They have so much goddamn energy. Get it out of them. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Pick a street and walk down. It's New York. Go walk around Central Park. Yeah. Ever heard of it? You know yeah. how big that thing is? <laughs> I know. I don't know either, but it's big. It's huge. <laughs> Many different parts of it. The yeah. Rambles, Sheep's Meadow, Strawberry Fields. I mean, it's- East Side, West Side. <laughs> Uptown, downtown, right. across 110th Street. <laughs> now we're in the Bronx. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, oh, so he was, uh, you know, Lincoln had a decent time, but he was like, I can't wait to go actually back to New York. Yeah. And, okay. Well, you got to take him. You got a chaperone. Him. I know. I know. On and I want trip. to, like, I felt so bad. Like, I was like, this is so stupid. You would have taken him to the Rippers if you were the chaperone. He shouldn't have refused How dare you? us. How dare you? <clears throat> no, 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 no. Sorry. Never I, been to a strip club. I'm half York. kidding. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, also bucks, let me let me also just far. let me just put this little like it was the first time that they had taken kids on a plane somewhere, like the school. It was a sort of a dip your toe into the water. So they were I think they were all nervous about it. But did That's everyone fine. survive? No one got injured. No, it was no fair. One got lost. Fine. Yep. So it was fine. It was fine. It's fine. Uh, uh, crippling cocaine addictions, but that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> that's you know, I'll, I'll say this as well. There were more drugs taken when it, last year the school trip was to <laughs> Disney World. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't say this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, yeah. Well, I'm just, it's just <laughs> telling you that there were more, as far as from what I heard, there's more drugs taken in Disney World than there was yeah. in New York City. Nobody was checking their bags. Or like nobody was, you know. Well, that's safe. Honestly, you would rather your kids be high in Disney World. Yes, I suppose. You're right. <laughs> it's a You're hermetically right. sealed fake city. <laughs> yep. That's a very good point, Matt. Yeah. Okay. That's a very good point. Good. Good for the kids still doing drugs. I like that. <laughs> I like, you like that. Speaking of drugs, my, my one of my good things is I drank um non alcoholic beer this week. Okay. On purpose. <laughs> Wow. It wasn't yeah. served by accident. It was not served by accident. And I realize how dumb we are, like our brains are. Yeah. I, I was drinking it. It tasted like exactly like beer. <laughs> okay. Smelt, looked like beer. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm i not saying like, oh, I was, <laughs> I was so drunk. But it, it scratched the itch all the same. Mm-hmm. It's great. Like, I, I, fine, if you're going to have, if you like want to get drunk or tipsy and you need to have like Four beers, five beers. Sure. The non-alcoholic's not going to work for you. <laughs> right. But if you just want that feeling of coming home and just a can of suds, like uh, like the people on the roof in Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> you feel like a man. It works. Yeah. It's the, it's the same thing. Yeah. So I don't know if like we've, we've come farther in non-alcoholic beer science, mm-hmm. but it's also, it's like less than half the calories. Yeah. 
I, can we do this with can we do this with sugar like with chocolate what's you know so what I mean? what's what's spearheading this just you're trying to cut down on your drinking well or? i told you yeah not cut down but uh no i'm trying to ramp it up uh <laughs> <laughs> not not necessarily cut down, but it's like if I can come home and have an alternative in the fridge, yeah, you know, during the week. Well, why wouldn't I just do that? Yeah, I guess that is trying to cut down. Sure, but uh, I, I tried the ghee. I told you about that. It's a little too. It's too delicious. Right. It just it goes too down expensive. too easy, and it's too expensive. Yeah, yeah. it's too expensive. But non alcoholic beer, it is more expensive than beer, which is also <laughs> kind of funny. It's vexing. But yeah. it. I don't know. It's. It's not as expensive as Gia, and it tastes good, so I think I'm, I'm going to go with it for a while. So what kind of beer was it? Well, just the, the brand, so I can get No free try. ads. No free ads. I'll tell you. <laughs> so it's called, I think it's called Athletic. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Athletic. Well, actually, yeah, yeah. you should be getting that for free. Right? I used to drink that. It's good. It's not bad, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You trying to cut down? I told you, I stopped drinking for like three years, and then I went to Europe and... Fell off the wagon. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, this also reminded me a long time ago, like this could be like close to two years ago at this point. I got an email to is this good account. We never did it on the show, but it kind of reminded me of this. So I'm going to read it to you now. Hey, Matteo, I was working in renovations for a short time and my boss and I were heading to the last job of the day. The customer was building a batting cage in his backyard. He asked me if we wanted a beer while we chatted about the blueprints. He asked if we wanted Heineken or a Bud and we both asked for a Heineken. He brings himself up three White Claws, says he's not into beer, but for us, he brought two Heinekens each. The strange thing is the beers were non-alcoholic, as very clearly stated on the can. He sent a picture of the can, and it's not like one of those ones where it just says, like, 0.0%. It, like, it says non-alcoholic right. in big letters on yeah. it. Uh, is this good to bring yourself an alcoholic beverage, but not your guest? Thanks for the hard work, Maddie. That's from Cole. And let me just say, Cole, I, it feels great when someone who's doing manual labor thanks me, a podcaster, for doing hard work. I do. <laughs> right? I appreciate that. So but you think but, that, that it was an accident, right? It had to be an accident. How do you accidentally do that? Who's talking, please? Uh, like, that's, there's no accident there, especially if you've got yourself three white claws. You know what has alcohol Wait, and what so, doesn't. So That's the funniest part to me. Oh, he, my God. How, how many blueprints do you need to look at for a fucking batting cage <laughs> that you're going to be there long enough to chug three white claws? Well, also, this the, this is their client, right? Like, so right. they work for the guy. So maybe he was just yeah. like, well, these guys are working, so I better give them non-alcoholic beer, right? Like. Oh, you think that's what he well, said? I don't he know. Was like rubbing it in their faces. It's like you want a beer? You 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 just failed the test. Here's a <laughs> non-alcoholic beer. Now get to work on my batting cage. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of needing a chaperone, this happened to me when I was a kid. I was home alone, and my parents um, had hired someone to like fix the the steps. Like they were, I don't know, some kind of stone or something. So mm-hmm. they needed someone to to. They were falling apart, and they needed someone to fix it. A mason. My grand. Uh, well. Sure. Uh, <laughs> the same people that make the jars fix the steps? I don't think so. My grandfather, rest in peace, he had, you know, he, he was very much, you know, sort of old country. And he had um, like a handwritten little phone book. And in it was all the kind of like repair people he knew, but it was just their first name and then the thing that they would fix. Okay. So <laughs> it was like, it was like Yurik the cement, Steph on the roof. You know, we yeah. would always loved going through. <laughs> it was very funny. Anyway, so Yurik the cement was over. Okay. Uh, a Polish guy didn't really speak much English, and so he rings the doorbell. He's working outside. He rings the doorbell. I open the door and. Uh, and, you know, my parents were like, oh, if he needs anything, you know, you'll help him out. And he's like, oh, do you have anything to drink? And I was like, oh, yeah, oh, I can get you some water. And he's like, you know, do you have anything else to drink? And I was like, orange juice? And he's like, what about something strong? I mean, you know, I'm like way too young to know what he's driving at here. <laughs> and uh, he's like, what about vodka? Again. Vodka? You know, po- <laughs> Polish guy. Yeah. And I go, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, my dad has a cabinet with vodka in it. So I open the cabinet and I'm like, oh, I don't really know how to serve this or how much to give. And then I saw that my dad, I don't know why, he had some of those like airplane sized bottles mm-hmm. of vodka. No, oh, that's helpful. Yeah, and he had three of them. So wow. I just scooped those up and I just said, here. Oh my and God. And he was like, thank you. So happy. My parents come home. They were 
so angry at me. <laughs> They're like, you gave him three like ounces of vodka? <laughs> And I was like, they were tiny bottles. What are you getting on my ass, Dad? Like, what? <laughs> he asked for them. He asked for them. And they're like, that's not calm. You said, you told me to help him. He's sleeping on anyway. the couch now, son. <laughs> no, I think he worked better. I, I don't know. He got the job done. So I don't really know what the what the big fucking deal is. Dad. <laughs> but it is very funny to me now. Like, if my kid, it's like we had a worker coming over. My kid gave him three shots of vodka. Well, he asked for it. I mean, you're just I, but being still, helpful. It is weird to ask a child. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Vodka. Yeah. <laughs> he saw his opportunity. He took it. He took it. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't asking your dad for that. <laughs> but he, but would he is the question. I don't think he you would know what I mean? Like, was he taking advantage of me? Yes. A child without a chaperone. Yes. Most definitely. Yeah. And it worked. I did. <laughs> well, what are we talking about? How... We're talking eighty nine ish, the year it ha- this happened. No, I honestly I was probably older than that. I, yeah. I would say like ninety, okay. ninety one, yeah. you know, some ten, eleven. If I, me, even twelve, I probably would have been like, yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do some quick uh, housekeeping here because Rachel, I got a question for you in house- housekeeping. So first, I'll go back and listen to the David Roth episode from yeah. Monday. A banger. Uh, it was a really fun episode. Uh, my question for you, Rachel, is did you know that your husband is the fanciest man I've ever met? <laughs> I was kind of surprised that you didn't know that. Because Did he... you li- did you listen to the episode? Yes, I did. I edited it. Do you it. know what I'm referring to? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, so thank you for editing it, first of all. Oh. Though there were no edits in this one. Well, putting it she, together. She put and... it together. I know. Assembly, assembly. Yes, I understand that. <laughs> oh, I just geez. didn't want people to think. I just didn't want people to think. Oh, it sounded so good because they. Oh cut yes, out all I didn't the bad fix it. There were no bad parts. There were no bad parts. Yeah, it's all we perfect. Didn't uh, it. So we did this thing where it was like, um, uh, "Is this a good rule?" A segment that we do on the show sometimes. And there was uh, an etiquette article I found by some highfalutin person who trained under the Queen's staff, and she consulted for Downton Abbey, which I should not have told JD because he immediately <laughs> decided that he was going to side with her on everything. <laughs> But like, so some of the, the the article was like eleven fine dining rules that you've broken your whole life, and so like, what, the first was like, never lift your menu off the table, and your husband was like, oh, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> Another one: once you sip from a glass, you must sip from the exact same place in that glass for the rest of the evening. Anyway, he was agreeing with them all; it was driving me nuts. Uh, <laughs> one we didn't funny. get to though, so <laughs> I, I just Rachel, I want to see if you're as fancy as your husband. Uh, here's one rule we didn't do. Keep your bread on the plate at all times unless you are delivering it to your mouth. In the explanation, she says, that means you should butter the bread while it is still on the plate, but do not butter the whole slice at once. Break off the piece you plan to eat, butter that piece, and then lift that piece into your mouth. Hmm. This applies to bagels, muffins, biscuits, and other bread-like products. Oh, my God. Yeah, Doesn't I mean... seem ruder? <laughs> Instead of just slathering on the butter once. Right. It seems unnecessary. You're breaking it up? Well, I I would argue that it's uncouth to slather butter over your entire Mm -hmm. bread. It's disgusting, really, when you think about it. It's just uncouth. I, yeah, I mean, James. Was this caveman here buttering the entire piece of bread? (laughs) Putting cream. So this applies to bagels. She's saying you cannot put cream cheese on the whole bagel. You have to break off a piece of the bagel. First of all, the queen's not eating a bagel. Is she? Is the queen eating a bagel? Why not? Uh, I mean, not in a fine dining. uh, But it's breakfast. But it is if it's a formal breakfast. It's it's all fine dining. I suppose. Are are bagels even popular in the in the UK? Uh, Great question. I don't. I don't know. I didn't. I don't think we saw any bagels over there. Really? Scones are their bagels. Yeah. 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 You're right. Okay. So the queen's not eating a bagel. But I anyway. I think this is a little crazy. And then if the butter is like in a communal dish, which it might be yeah. in some fancy you... pewter boat. Sure. That means you keep reaching over to the butter. No, you take yeah. off a portion and you put it on your plate and you use from that. It's probably not allowed. No, it. that's But if, if it is, you got to keep it on the top right, <laughs> bottom right hand corner. We know yes. that. That's right. Bottom yes. right hand corner is for sauces and butters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, Jason is like his parents are both very hoity-toity. Um, well, I wouldn't go that far, but sure. His they dad, are, the homicide cop? I know. They're very sophisticated <laughs> and intimidating. Like, your mother was groomed by her her aunt, who was very well-off and very 
I thought it sounded I mean, like high that, society. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> groomer. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you know, yeah. riding horses and such and spending yeah, a lot of time like with her. That was like one summer, and then they were shipped back to Belfast. But sure, yeah. I mean, <laughs> she, it, she, she held definitely on to left it. A, it left an indelible mark on my mother, for sure. Most definitely. For sure. Uh, all right. Well, if you'd like to support the show, go to patreon.com slash is this good. That's where uh, you can give us money. So that JD <laughs> <laughs> can buy the fine China that he really needs hmm. to complete his life. Mm-hmm. You'll get ad free episodes, access to our thriving community on Discord and an exclusive episode every month. And of course, the hangouts as well, which was last week. It was a very fun time. And of course, send topics for future shows to is this good pod at gmail.com. I like to get some more emails and topics for the show subscribe on youtube leave a review on apple Podcasts. a bit of follow-up jd mm-hmm. remember not uh last week's or this week's episode but the one before where we did all the uh, april fools stuff yeah and i called out the whoopee cushion makers of america <laughs> and well, let's be honest probably china and i said how have we not gotten any better at these like these work five percent of the time we're not innovating mm-hmm. we're not iterating and someone wrote to me and said you're 100% wrong. There are now self-inflating whoopee cushions. Yeah, I saw I that I looked too. it up on Amazon. Cheap. They're cheap too. It's not like... <laughs> Did you buy one? These are expensive whoopee cushions. <laughs> yeah, you could get two for six bucks, I think. Yeah, this, this was a packet of three. So you know on Amazon when they write like the bullet point features of, um, of the product that you're going to buy? Sure. Okay, so he, I want to read you what these are. Uh, <laughs> self-inflated. No flour or powder. These whoopee cushions are self-inflating, will not make you wait long time between those funny poot sounds. <laughs> There's nothing worse than the wait time. It's like nothing the, worse. The whoopee cushion refract- refractory period. <laughs> I toss it under you, makes a big poot sound. I pick it up. Rachel walks in the room like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But she can't catch you blowing it. Otherwise, she's going to know. <laughs> that's exactly right. Uh, next big bullet point, loud poot sound. Okay, Ooh. that's good. Got a brother or sister you want to prank? An annoying neighbor? Upcoming party? This funny prank product will do the job for you and will make everyone laugh from these extremely loud poot sounds. Annoying neighbor. <laughs> uh, great gift idea. Our unique decorated fun box will make this gift perfect for any birthday, Christmas, Halloween, bar mitzvah, April Fool's, or any other holiday. So we do thank you to the Whoopi Cushion Makers. You are getting after it, which is really nice to see. Uh, I want to ask you, so I had a problem with my air fryer. Okay. This week? Yeah. Uh, the Do you have an air fryer? Uh, do we? It's yeah. not like the, uh, you know how there's like some that have the pot. If you, you had one, you'd know. It's called an air fryer, but it's not like the, you put the pot in and it really fries it it's well. Not, it's not an air fryer. It's like oh, a, it's like a, a oven? Toaster. Yeah. Like a tiny has an toaster air, oven? It has an air fry setting, but mm-hmm. it's not an okay. air fryer. All right. So you've got legit I mean, honestly, air not fryer. a huge, all the air fryer is, is a tiny oven anyway. Right. But the, there's like a, a plate that you put the stuff on and mm-hmm. that plate is like teflon coated so it's non-stick and the the teflon coating is like really coming off like in a big way oh. which is okay. toxic right mm-hmm. so i reach out to the good people at dash air fryers and i say hey uh, the, the, this is wiping off can you send us a new plate and so it's like a lot of back and forth and finally i get from the phone they say give us your email address someone from you know the department will be reaching out to you so they send me an email. They said, what's the general problem? I explained it to them. They send me back an email that says, hello, Matthew. Thanks for submitting your information for a review. We have a few additional questions regarding your unit. <laughs> so they send me one, two, three, four questions. And I want to ask you them because you're saying, well, this is not our air fryer. How would we know? But I was answering them in a way where I was like, what is the right answer here? Because if right. I give them the wrong answer, they're going to say, well... You didn't. You weren't using it properly. Right, right. So I want to give the answers that would lead them to say, "Shit, this guy did everything right." <laughs> okay. And they indicted me. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what kind of nonstick cooking spray are you using in your unit? What do you think they'd want me to say? Wow. I, I would th- say something high, high burning. So like a yes. canola, something uh, like that. I said right. av- av- avocado. Oh, perfect. Oh. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Are you hand washing your unit or washing it in the dishwasher? Hand washing. Oh, hand washing. Hand washing. Sure. And we are hand washing yeah. it. Okay, so we got. No, I'm surprised they didn't ask with what kind of a sponge. Because if it's abrasive, that could that could be scraping the thing. Right. Mm. right. What kind of cooking utensils are you using with your unit? Wooden. <laughs> Great answer. Yeah. I said rubber tongs. 
Oh. Not true, but I said it. <laughs> okay, rubber tongs. That's a good answer. Yeah. Uh, and then, are you drying your crisper basket after use or allowing it to air dry? So this one I was really stumped Ooh. with. I felt like they wanted me to say, um, I hand dried it. Really? But then I thought if I'm, you know, wiping it with a, a cloth, that that might be wiping off the thing. So I was really stumped on this one. That's weird. You should I, be able to wipe it dry without it coming off. What kind? What is it made of? I know, but so then I was like, maybe they want me to say air dry. But then I thought maybe air dry is bad because the moisture stays on it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so after much hemming and hawing and trying to find an answer online, I said, hand dry. <laughs> okay. And then said, once we receive your response, we can continue your warranty review. So I send in all these answers. <clears throat> a few hours later, I get an email response. Thank you for your responses. Your warranty is expired. What? Oh <laughs> they were just stalling. My God. They were stalling. We're they were four days away, guys. It didn't matter days. what I said. <laughs> what the? I could have said I invented air dryer, uh, air, dryer air fryers. That is insane. So uh, then I said, "What? What?" <laughs> and they said, "As a one-time uh, offer, we will allow. If you click on this link, you can register your product, and we will expand your warranty to two years." Wow. But it's already so I, ruined. So, so I did. No, I did. And they said, I did. And I said, okay, I did it. And they said, all right, we're sending you a new one. What? <laughs> that is so convoluted. They just wanted your it info. Is, it, it, well, it's literally like um, uh, like meeting a troll at a bridge right. that doesn't want you to pass. And they're just stalling for time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. This is just a long air frying riddle. So wow. you haven't gotten it yet, though. No, I have not gotten it yet. And by the way, I also have not received uh, my JetBlue points. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm really over on a lot of yeah. uh, customer service here. Uh, and then, okay, one more piece of follow-up here. This is from Variety. Remember we were talking a while ago about how whenever you go see movies, you tend to go to those places where you can order food and stuff? Yes. What, you didn't? <laughs> well... <laughs> You made it the way you worded it. Jaden didn't like, like that characterization. Like, I don't like that characterization because I don't love those places. Rachel likes them. I, wh we went once in what, exactly. five years? So it's not exactly a, a fair characterization to be like, oh, you you love the movie tavern, don't you, JD? All right, JD loves movie taverns. Uh, <laughs> here's a headline from Variety. Danny McBride. We know Dan. We love Danny McBride. Danny McBride. East Bound and Down, Vice Principals, mm -hmm. Foot Fist Way, Pineapple Express. All right. Danny McBride can't stand movie theaters serving dinner and drinks. I hate it. And you're going to have to piss in the middle of the film. That's a headline. What a headline. So he quoted as saying, I hate it. I can't stand it. I also don't think it makes sense to combine booze with movies. You're going to have to piss. Doesn't alcohol make you want to get up and get loose? You don't want to sit there, drink beer, and just be quiet. I have no interest in going to see a movie and just pounding IPAs, just fucking falling asleep. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been saying. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And and you're a peer, JD, so you uh, yeah. know. You know. Oh, my God. I will... I will purposefully it's like a, a four-hour flight in a window seat for me i will purposefully exactly. dehydrate exactly. myself and then i'll have popcorn and i'll get a bottle of water and i'll take little tiny sips of it <laughs> like I, a little baby bird yeah there's no right. i'm never ordering a beer at a, at a movie theater no. ever ever so he he continues a better idea according to mcbride would be theaters that offer marijuana and allow patrons to smoke pot <laughs> movies and weed go together fucking perfectly he said McBride, David Gordon Green, and their film school buddy Jody Hill had at some point kicked around the idea of opening a theater with a built-in dispensary. Any idea what they were going to call it? Hmm. Hmm. No. I'm trying to green think. I'm, I'm going through his catalog right now trying to think. Oh, uh, no, no. The... Green screen. It's oh, a, green it's a screen. Film. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. I like that. If I went to a theater and was like, here's your popcorn and here's fucking weed, I feel like that would be an awesome little <laughs> combo right there. <laughs> It's, I, this I article is I it's, agree more. these quotes are in his voice it's great <laughs> know, it's so it's, great uh because you know I, I was thinking there's alamo draft house here mm -hmm. i don't know if there's one i don't think there's one in Atlanta. No, but they, so. they're the most like stringent like if you say anything we will kick you out like they do these viral little campaigns where mm -hmm. people call them and complain about getting kicked out of the theater for texting or something like that and then they proudly put it up on the internet being right. like see yeah 
We kicked this guy out, and we're proud of it. <laughs> like, they, they would kick you out of the Alamo Draft House for looking at an Indiglo watch. Right. Okay, that's how stringent these people are. <laughs> What's more distracting, someone looking at a text or someone ordering food and the food being delivered and then someone <laughs> eating food? Right? We know the answer here. That's okay, yeah. So it's it's just, and also, they're giving people booze and encouraging it because, obviously, that's the highest markup and making the money. Mm-hmm. What causes people to have bad social etiquette and talk? Through things and talk louder, You're booze. Right. You're right. So yeah. it just doesn't make sense. You know, I'd also like to add, when they say silence your phones at the beginning of movies, put them on the lowest brightness, too. I'd like that to be as part of the spiel. Because if you have to take your phone at, like, I don't know, you got a babysitter at home, then no one's going to really notice. But if you're on normal brightness, even if it was on silent when it buzzed in your pocket, mm-hmm. it's going to be annoying. So. Can't, can't you just tell the babysitter, we will be unreachable for two hours and 15 minutes. Well, I'm turning the phone off. Call yeah, 911. there's an emergency with your child. Call 911. Well, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm in a movie theater. 911 emergency. <laughs> the child I'm babysitting says he wants snackies? That's not an emergency. Don't call me for that. Ah. All right. You call, All right. You, call, uh, you call the emergency services and let me know afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> all right anyways down with the movie tavern yeah now that now that i've danny mcbride on my side i can really <laughs> go to war about this great i i shan't be joining it's easier to uh, die on a hill when you have a celebrity that you admire with you that's right <laughs> jody hill one of the partners in green screen it's great where do i invest take my money but it's also do, do we need the weed i guess the problem is you're probably not going to be able to smoke weed in the theater. Well, so just a vape. Edi- just edibles? Uh, I, okay, vapes are fine, edibles. But edibles is if I'm buying them at the theater, they're it kicking does... in in the middle of Act 2. Right. That's not, that's not going to do yeah. me any good. Yeah. So I just think a theater where you encourage people to be high. I don't know. <laughs> well, but your snack, your snack uh, uh, profits would probably go up, right? Because people like to snack when they're high. Yes. You're selling way more concessions if people are. Yeah, high. that's hundred percent true. hundred percent true. Though once you once you get high and you're in the seat, you're probably like, I don't know, I don't know if I can get up. Yeah, but that's where you have people <laughs> offering. You have people. And now we're back at square one. It's still better. It's still, at least you're not pissing. At least you're at least you're not <laughs> pissing. Uh, join us Monday if we have a new show coming out with Avital Ash. She's an actor. She's a stand-up. She's a writer. She's touring a one-person show called. Avital Ash workshop, workshops her suicide note. Oh, geez. Provocative, huh? I love it. Can't wait to ask <laughs> her about it. I'm going to see it. I'm going to see it at the end of April. Oh, oh okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and uh, she also happens to be married to Amir Blumenfeld, former guest. This will be the third husband and wife team we've had on the show. We should have like a newlywed. Or maybe. No, 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 no. We've had at least four now that I think about it. We've had Patty and Harry. Yeah. Mm. We've had CJ uh, and Megan. Megan, yeah. Uh, we've had Skeets and Nora. Yep. We've had JD me Rachel. And Rachel. Does that count? Sure. We are married. Matt and Jill. <laughs> Matt and Jill. <laughs> oh shit! On my fingers, I'm counting twice for each person. That oh, I'll just divide by two at the end. Uh, and then let's say Amir and, and Avital, yeah. not to count our chickens before they hatch. I haven't recorded it yet. Right. That's five couples. We should do a <laughs> newlywed type game or something. With bring everybody. You know what I mean? Can we have that many squares? <laughs> yeah, that's a good, good point. Yeah, you're giving yourself the kind of work where then you're going to get angry at yourself for <laughs> suggesting it. So we're not going to do that, uh, but I'm excited <laughs> to talk to her uh, later this week. Email us is this good pod at gmail.com. Subscribe everywhere. Leave her if you on Apple Podcasts. This was JD, Matt, and Rachel reaching out from the great beyond, and we'll see you next week. Bye. My apologies to everyone. I totally forgot to ask Rachel about the three conspiracies that she was going to bring up. I don't know why, in a sense, she didn't just say it at some point. Uh, Again, as I've tried to tell you, this isn't a show of just me talking. I'd like you each to be jumping in whenever you feel it. After you talk, sometimes I just jump in if something's related. But uh, I will take the L on this one as a sort of de facto host. You will want to tune in next week 
for Rachel's three <laughs> conspiracy theories. Again, I do apologize. Now it's really it getting built up. God damn it. <laughs> Should have jumped in. <laughs> That's my punishment. Awesome. <laughs> All right. See you next week.